Hello, 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 Taurus. I'm Poetic Heretic, and this is your September 2020 astrology forecast, where we take a look at the most significant astrological developments of the month and interpret them for your sign. Now, we are doing something a little bit different this month, and that is rather than my having a written report, I am just going to go over uh, each of the aspects I picked out with you in real time. So that is what we are doing. Also, remember that all predictive work like this will be most accurate for your rising sign. So I highly recommend using these videos primarily for your rising sign first and foremost, and then only after that, if you would like, your sun and or moon sign. So with that said, Taurus, let us begin. The first chart that we need to look at here is Mars square Saturn, which while it does perfect at the end of the month on September 29th, we need to look at it first because this is an aspect that is in effect essentially all month long for the entire month of September. Now, if you saw my videos last month, uh, perhaps you recall what I said about Mars and what is happening with it right now. It is in an extended stay in Aries that is highly unusual, and that is because of a retrograde that it is about to go through this month. Um, and this is a very big part of that. So what's happening is that as Mars slows down to station retrograde uh, in the middle of this month, it's holding position right there at about 25 degrees of Aries, as you can see on screen. And as it's holding this position, it is doing so in a square with Saturn. And it just so happens that uh, when Mars makes finally that perfect square to Saturn on September 29th, Saturn is by then uh, stationing as well. It is just stationed direct. So this is a highly unusual situation. We are basically stuck in this Mars square Saturn energy for the entire month. And it's very frustrating. This is very um, high frustration energy. And so we have to kind of put up with that this entire month. And so everything else that we go over in this video needs to be understood within the context of this specific uh, Mars-Saturn aspect that we have here. Now, this is not going away anytime soon. Again, if you recall from what I said in my forecast last month, this is something that's going to be with us until January of 2021. Um, but this specific part of it, the Mars-Saturn square, is especially focused for this month of September. So, again, this is this is very frustrating energy. It's the energy of Mars wanting to push forward while Saturn is holding things back. Mars wants to be very impulsive and take action now. And Saturn is saying, no, you have to do this first, or you have to go through this process first, or you have to uh, navigate this obstacle first. And so it's very like push-pull uh, energy, not easy to navigate at all, but... Um, it's highly transformative in the end. So for you specifically, Taurus, what we have here with Mars square Saturn, even though it is uh, not exactly going to conclude anytime soon, um, what we're looking at is something in the area of uh, how you spend time alone or your enemies and or your beliefs, spirituality, ideals or that which is foreign to you is creating a stressful situation involving focused action, motivation, desire, uh, as well as authority figures or reality, limitation, obstacles that is pushing you into new areas of activity. And those new areas of activity uh, you will not likely get to anytime soon because, again, this is a very slow-moving aspect that we're just kind of stuck in right now. Uh, but eventually, of course, we will we will see these new areas. And uh, those new areas of activity as well as the areas likely to be affected by this particular transit for you 
uh, include how you spend time alone or your enemies, your major relationships, your beliefs, spirituality, or that which is foreign to you, and or your career or public image. So a lot of potential there. Uh, but again, this isn't going to be over with anytime soon. I also want to note here that with Mars square to Saturn, there may be a desire to fight that would be best held off for now because Mars is what motivates us. It's what we fight for and what makes us driven, these sorts of things. Well, while Mars is in a fairly good condition to take on Saturn being in its home sign of Aries, Saturn is also in its home sign of Capricorn and is in even better condition because it also has Pluto and Jupiter there with it. So Saturn's the clear winner of this fight. So this is not the time to, to exercise your heroism. Save that for six months from now if you can, or at least give it another at least month or two again if you can. So that is that is my uh, introductory note for this forecast that we have this Mars Saturn square that is with us all month and everything else that happens this month, everything else we're going to go over must be understood within that larger context that um, frustration that is happening in the background. So the first major event we have this month going now in sequential order is the full moon on September 2nd at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time. And of course, I should mention all times here are in Eastern Time, location set for New York, and these are zero Aries uh, charts so that they apply to everyone no matter where you are on the planet. So adjust your time zone and location accordingly. Now... The full moon this month is in the sign of Pisces. And so, first of all, that is, generally speaking now, creating a nice reprieve or relief, perhaps, from the intensely earthy-focused Virgoan energy that we uh, typically have so much of this time of the year as the sun makes its way through the sign of Virgo. Um the moon in Pisces is very dreamy, very imaginative, very creative, um, very sensitive to energy, these sorts of things, very spiritual. And it's also co-present with Neptune, sort of a maybe very wide conjunction there, nine and a half degrees apart, uh, which is the modern ruler of Pisces. And so that makes it even more dreamy and magical and mysterious and all of these things. In addition to that, this full moon is in a rather tight sextile with Uranus. And so there is also this element of excitement and unpredictability, this electric energy that we will have on and around the time of this full moon. So mainly early September, first few days of September, I would say. So that's quite exciting. You know, we may see uh, new developments, innovative developments, even shocking or unexpected developments uh, on or around the time of this full moon. So it's an interesting mix, very dreamy, but also very electric and exciting as well. Now, for you, Taurus, this full moon is taking place in your 11th house of friends and social networking. And so the full moon is where things come to a head. And so you can expect things to indeed come to a head in the area of your friends and or social networking or any groups that you belong to on or around September 2nd, the time of the full moon. Now, of course, in some time zones, that'll be September 1st. Like I said, adjust your time zone accordingly. Now, Later that same day, at 8.19 a.m. Eastern Time, we have Venus opposite Saturn. So this adds another contrasting flavor to the mix that is very interesting because Venus opposite Saturn is a much more somber, serious vibe as opposed to the dreamy, magical, mystical energy of the 
uh, Pisces full moon that uh, perfects basically that same day as well. So that's an interesting juxtaposition for one thing. Uh, for another thing, for you, Taurus, this Venus-Saturn opposition is taking place on your third and ninth house axis. And so this is someone or something challenging you in the area of your communication, short distance travel, or what is familiar to you, and or your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is unfamiliar to you. That involves how you relate to others or the things that you like or socializing, as well as authority figures or obstacles or limitations or having to accept some kind of difficult reality or face some kind of difficult reality that then ends up affecting you personally, your work, health, schedule, day-to-day -day activities, your belief, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you, and or your career or public image. So a lot of possibilities here. Uh, we should also mention that this Venus-Saturn opposition is actually the last in a series of oppositions that Venus made uh, first to Jupiter, then to Pluto, and then finally, as we see here, to Saturn. And the previous two happened at the end of August. So this is kind of uh, quite possibly for many of us a continuation of a theme that really picked up right around the end of August and perhaps even the finalization of that theme. Um, notice also that this Venus-Saturn opposition is activating the Mars-Saturn square that we went over. You can see how uh, as Venus opposes Saturn, she also squares Mars. And so this is uh, some pretty difficult energy. It is true. Um, Mars could exacerbate that challenge with anger, with frustration, with the desire to take action, but being unable to. Uh, so just, you know, exercise a little extra caution around that time, uh, I guess would be my advice. All right, so that is what we have there. Next on September 11th at 4.20 p.m., we have the sun opposite Neptune. So first of all, the sun opposite Neptune is more of that contrast uh, that we kind of went over with the full moon of the sun in Virgo, which is very earthy and practical, and Neptune in Pisces, which is very dreamy and imaginative. And so we're already seeing that dynamic play out to begin with as we look at this aspect. But then we... Note that, of course, it is an opposition, and for you, Taurus, it's happening in your 5th and 11th houses. And so this is essentially someone or something challenging you in the area of your creative self-expression and or your friends or social group um, that involves your sense of self or energy or your ego or vitality and or your dreams, imagination, illusion, uh, fantasy that then ends up affecting your home and family life and or your friends or social group. So an interesting uh, mix there we have indeed. Notice also that the sun in this aspect, in addition to being opposite Neptune, is also trine Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. And so uh, some very powerful stuff there indeed. Now, this is indicating the high probability for breakthroughs as well around this time. Trines are removal of resistance and facilitation of speed. Trines facilitate speed, in other words. So, the trine to Jupiter, we could see an expansion of one's worldview. The trine to Pluto, we could see... Uh, deep emotional experiences and inner transformation. With the trine to Saturn, we could see the uh, facing of a difficult reality or the, how do I put this, especially with the trine, I think in many cases the approval of authority figures, because again, remember trines are breakthroughs. Um, the approval of authority figures or in a more negative sense, sometimes I think this could be like reality sort of crashing into things, but the sun is is lighting up these uh, 
realities, whatever they may be. Now, uh, again, remember the Jupiter-Pluto-Saturn conglomeration in Capricorn is in your ninth house, and so it may also involve your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So take that for what you will. Next, we have the new moon in Virgo on September 17th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. So uh, indeed, speaking of the practical energy, it continues into this aspect. This is a very practical and earthy new moon. The new moon sets the tone for the weeks to come, the next uh, few weeks or the next month, the entire lunar cycle. And this new moon, this seed that grows throughout the following month is very earthy and practical being there in Virgo, perhaps very analytical and logical as well. So that's one thing. Another thing that makes that even more so the case is the fact that this new moon is powerfully trine Saturn. Only 27 minutes, in fact, that's less than half a degree from being perfectly trine Saturn. And so Saturn things, again, reality, limitation, obstacles, authority figures, uh, these sorts of things, um, are very much connected to this new moon, this new beginning, this next month-long cycle. So we have that. We also have uh, the fact that this new moon is taking place for you, Taurus, in your fifth house of creative self-expression. And so you can you can expect new beginnings uh, involving your creativity. Uh, the fifth house is also where we see love, fun, romance, uh, children, risk-taking or gambling. You know, any or all of these themes can uh, light up around this time. And uh, with the trine to Saturn, maybe see some breakthroughs involving reality or limitation. And uh, again, that's in Capricorn, your ninth house of beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So that may be involved as well. All right, the last major aspect that we'll be looking at this month is Mercury opposite Mars on September 24th at 6.47 a.m. Eastern Time. So, oh boy, this aspect. <laughs> First of all, I can tell you uh, very clearly that when we have Mercury in an opposition to Mars, it's practically screaming at us that this is a time where arguments can happen. Arguments, conflicts, um, angry words, you know, vicious oppositions between people. Uh, it's made even worse by the fact that they're both square to Saturn. So as Mercury moves into this opposition with Mars, it also squares Saturn, certainly increasing the tension significantly. Um, so that's something we can look at on one level. Now, for you specifically, Taurus, as we dig deeper into this aspect, this is, again, someone or something likely challenging you in the area this time of your work, health schedule, or day-to-day -day activities, and or how you spend time alone or your enemies, and involving communication or what you write, study, talk, or think about, uh, as well as focused action, motivation, desire, uh, these sorts of things, and will likely end up affecting your money or self-image, your creative self-expression, how you spend time alone or your enemies, and or your major relationships. If you can't tell, I'm doing this all in my head on the spot, so that's why I might pause for a second or two occasionally. So that's one level of it, and that's already quite a bit to chew on. However, remember here, or notice here, that this is also square Saturn. Both Mercury and Mars, as they are in opposition to one another, are square Saturn. And of course, Mars has been square Saturn, and Mercury is kind of coming in there and triggering this. And so uh, another interpretation of this is that as Mercury comes 
in and, and uh, activates this aspect, the Mars-Saturn square, we may see a significant manifestation of that around this time as well, September 24th. So keep that in mind. But basically, the square to Saturn uh, added to the mix is on one level, simply increasing the frustration of having to deal with limitation, reality, obstacles, um, maybe stubborn authority figures. But on another level, uh, if my knowledge of medieval astrology serves me correctly, and I believe that it does, this is a configuration where the idea of a planet accepting the management applies. And that is where the heaviest planet or the slowest moving planet um, uh, sort of takes responsibility for the other planets in the mix. And here that is indeed Saturn. And so what we so often see when a planet accepts the management of two other planets is um, that planet will represent like a judge or authority figure who decides the outcome in some way or like mediates things in some way between the two opposing parties, or in this case, it is indeed two opposing parties. Now, that is even more probable in this configuration because Saturn is itself already an authoritative planet. It is an authority figure. And so I think uh, that's what we'll be seeing for many people. You know, this could be uh, for many, and not just for your sign of Taurus, but for all signs, uh, I think, uh, like legal cases, you know, with Saturn representing the judge and Mercury and Mars representing the uh, two opposing parties. Um, but remember, for going back to you specifically, Taurus, Saturn is in your ninth house. And so if it does manifest as an authority figure um, who decides a conflict between yourself and another person or even another situation, that authority figure can likely be found in the area of your life that is your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So that is something else to um, be aware of and prepare for as well. And so that is it, my dear Taurians. Um, so to try to sum this up a bit, I would say know that September is not an easy month. And I'm not here to um, sugarcoat shit for you. I'm here to tell it like it is to you because I believe it is much better to be aware of the reality and be prepared for that than to um, go into things just believing whatever you want to believe or, you know, it's much better to know what the reality is than I just telling you what you want to hear because then you're prepared for it. Um, this Mars-Saturn square, I have to take it back to that here because it all does sort of come back to that. Uh, that is so indicative of... Uh, frustration this month unfortunately and it's it's an energy that we all just kind of have to get used to and we have to work with it as best we can now i mean i'm an astrologer the purpose that i am trying to fulfill is to predict events it is not to really try to interpret the the meaning behind them but my personal philosophy, uh, sort of separate from that, is that I think that we experience each and every thing that we experience, we experience each and every transit, and anything else that can be mapped through astrology that we experience for a reason, for our growth and development, or at least for something akin to growth and development. And so I would say, don't look at this Mars-Saturn square as, oh, this sucks and I wish it would go away, but instead look at it as this is a necessary ongoing period of transformation. And I also want to say, I kind of alluded to this last month and in those forecasts, but it bears repeating this month because it's so significant. As Mars gets deeper and deeper into this extended state in Aries, um, remember that that's causing you it's causing all of us to spend more time with that particular area of our lives now for you specifically taurus it is in your 12th house which i'm not going to lie is 
potentially very rough. It's having to do with how you spend time alone and or your enemies or isolation or illness, whether physical illness or mental illness, illness, these sorts of things. So it's not easy, but it's, it's, it's symbolizing the necessity for a greater amount of time and care and patience and presence with that area of your life. There's more to do and review here and focus upon than uh, we normally might. And again, this Mars-Saturn square that I'm talking about now, this does not go away at the end of September at all. This is with us at least uh, for the next few months. Well, basically, it's to sort of oversimplify things, uh, it's with us through January of 2021. So we're in this for the long haul. And I know it's frustrating. I know it sucks. I get mad as hell as much as anyone else does. But it is nevertheless the reality and it's best to work with this resistance as best we can rather than try to push against it or, or try to, I don't know, just want it to be over with already. Though I can certainly empathize with that as well. <laughs> so... There you have it, Taurus. That is your September 2020 forecast. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe as I'm always creating more content like this. I hope that despite the sort of wretched energy that we have here, that you still have a great month of September indeed. And thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.